ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream, to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream, the cream shampoo for true hair loveliness. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, John Brown, Charles Dant and the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing A Feudin' and A Fightin'. Dag it, here we go again, Ma. Feudin' and fussin' and a fightin'. Sometimes it gets to be exciting. Don't like them honorary neighbors down by the creek We'll be plumb out of neighbors next week Grandma, poor old grandma Why the have to shoot poor grandma She lies neath the clover Someone caught her bending over Pickin' up a daisy, feudin' and fussin' and a fightin'. Peg of my heart, I love you. This is a wrong that needs a right. Let's get that funeral service over so then we can start in a feudin' again. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh as time goes by. Daughter, baby daughter. Oh, she poisoned all the neighbor's chickens. Now, daughter, she had an otter. At least till she could run like the dickens. They hit her with a shovel, feuding and fighting and a fussing. No use of standing here a cussing. Let's give our daughter a pistol now that she's four and go feuding and fighting some more. Oh, they got me. Famous beauty authority Kay Dumit sends all women her secret of true hair loveliness. For the shining hair that men love, discover that touch of magic, Luster Cream Shampoo. Discover the remarkable way Luster Cream Shampoo makes hair gleam with natural highlights and shadows, sparkle with silken softness, delight with clean fragrance. Not a soap, not a liquid, Luster Cream Shampoo is an amazing new dainty cream that whips up luxurious lather-like magic in hard or soft water and sweeps dullness away. Out of her wealth of cosmetic lore, Kay Dumit blended gentle lanolin with special secret ingredients to achieve this revolutionary new cream that brings out the rich, natural beauty of your hair, leaves it obedient to brush and comb. Try that economical dollar jar of Luster Cream Shampoo sold at all cosmetic counters, also 30 cent and 55 cent sizes, and learn what more and more women of all ages are learning every day, the way to new glamour with Luster Cream, the cream shampoo for true hair loveliness. And now, once again, we bring you a day in the life of Dennis Day, the story of a lovable young boy and his uphill struggle to become average. <laughs> Last June, as you may remember, Dennis's boss, Mr. Willoughby, decided to close his store during July and August, thus forcing our young hero to spend the summer back home with his folks. So it's been two months since anyone in Weaverville has seen him. Have you missed your employee, Mr. Willoughby? Missed him? Yes. Dennis? Yes. <laughs> Oh, now, Mr. Willoughby, I'm sure that attitude isn't true of the folks over at the Anderson boarding house, especially his girlfriend, Mildred. Is it, Mildred? It certainly isn't. Dennis is a perfect darling. 
My mother and a lot of other people in this town think he hasn't much sense and no initiative or ambition. Well, they're the ones who never tried loving him and are just willing to sit back and rely on evidence. Oh, I, I take it then that your mother doesn't quite approve of your boyfriend. Is that right, Mrs. Anderson? Let's put it this way. I'm a woman who has always followed the policy of live and let live. But in Dennis's case, I'm willing to make an exception. <laughs> oh, my. I'm, I'm sure your husband doesn't feel that way, Mrs. Anderson. Do you, Mr. Anderson? Do you, Herbert? I can express my opinion in just two words. <laughs> the same two words I express all my opinions with. Yes, poopsie. <laughs> I see. Well, I'm sure our young hero is fully aware of these conflicting opinions, and tonight, as he walks down Elm Street from the bus depot to rejoin the Andersons, it must comfort him to know that at least his girlfriend, Mildred... Hey, wait a minute. What is this sight that greets his eyes on the darkened porch of the Anderson house? Two figures very close together. One indisputably Mildred, and the other... A man. A strange man. The figures get even closer together, then separate. One leaves, the other stays. Galvanized into action, our hero sprints forward and dashes up the steps. Mildred Anderson! Dennis! So, you're just like the rest of your sex. Whenever a fella comes home and finds someone in the arms of a man, it's always a woman. <laughs> now look, Dennis. I saw you with your arm around him. But Dennis... And he had his arm around you. But Dennis... And your lips were puckered. Dennis! Don't you know you could get kissed that way? <laughs> Dennis, stop being silly. Silly? That's just how it happens. I know from personal hearsay. Dennis, if you'd only let me explain. Ha! <laughs> Here I've been counting the days till you'd come back. You didn't have to call in someone to count with you. <laughs> Who is this fellow? How long have you been friends? Three days. So, that's the kind he is. I might have guessed. Well, what do you mean? Only known you three days and already he's letting you kiss him. Feh! <laughs> Look, he kissed me, and I didn't let him. He just turned around and did it before I could stop him. A likely story, my good woman. Just remember that two can play at that game. I mean, besides the two who are playing it already. <laughs> Dennis, honestly, Mr. Stewart means nothing to me. He's just the producer of the summer stock company that's been playing in town. I was only talking to him on account of Mother. Oh, sure, sure. But it's true. Don't you trust your own fiancé? Our fiancé ship is at an end, Mildred. I bid you good night. What? You heard me, and I'll thank you to return my boy ranger badge in the morning. <laughs> Dennis, you can't mean that. All I can say is that it's a lucky thing I found this out before we were married. Otherwise, it would have been a lot more difficult to break our engagement. <laughs> but, Dennis, I've told you the truth. I have spoken, Mildred. Dennis, you're crazy. Even if it were like you thought, surely you'd give me another chance. No, Mildred. No woman's gonna two-time me two times. <laughs> Good night. Dennis! Oh, oh, golly, of all the awful things to happen. Darn that Mr. Stewart, anyhow. If I ever get my hands on him, I'll... Mildred, what on earth's wrong with Dennis? He walked right past me without even saying hello. Oh, it's that darn summer theater director, Mr. Stewart. He pretended he was showing me a scene, and, and then he tried to kiss me, and, and Dennis saw him. Mr. Stewart? Oh, Mildred, did you ask him about me? Mother, Dennis and I have split up. Don't you even care? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Inwardly, I'm a mess, but life must go on. Uh, what did he say about me? If it's any satisfaction to you, he said you could take Mrs. Green's place. You'll be Lady Macbeth on opening night. Oh, Mildred, how perfectly Wonderful. Wonderful? How can you stand there and say anything's wonderful? I've lost my dentist forever. What am I going to do? Uh, now, now, darling, don't you worry. Uh, we'll stop by Robinson's Pet Shop first thing in the morning and buy you a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> It's me, Herbert Anderson. Oh, come in, Mr. Anderson. I just thought I'd drop in and welcome you to... Uh, why, Dennis, you haven't even unpacked. I'm not going to, Mr. Anderson. I'm leaving this place. Leaving? Why? 
Mr. Anderson, suppose you came home suddenly one night and found someone kissing your wife. Uh, someone with a will of iron, you mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, that's what happened to me. Really? Well, still, I don't see why you should leave just because you caught someone kissing my wife. It wasn't your wife, it was Mildred. Mildred? You caught Mildred doing a thing like that? Yes, sir. Hugging and kissing a man in cold blood. <laughs> I feel pretty bad, Mr. Anderson. I was looking forward to marriage. It's kind of hard to give up my dreams. Yes, I know, Dennis. And I'm truly sorry. Is there anything I can do? No, sir. It's nice of you, but I want Mildred or nothing. <laughs> No, no, I mean, is there anything I can do to help? After all, you can't just give up, you know. Huh? Well, you're going to put up a fight for her, aren't you? Where's your masculinity? Where's your virility? You've got the same amount I have, haven't you? Yes, sir, I guess I'm dead. <laughs> oh, nonsense. Don't you suppose I had a rival for Pupsy's hand? But did I stand idly by? No. I got in there and fought like a tiger. Gee, and you were the victor, huh? Well, it certainly looked like it at that time, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Now, uh, who is this rival of yours? Well, I think his name is Stewart. The fellow who's putting uh, Macbeth on in the summer theater? Why, he's only been in town for a couple of days. I know. I guess he's just easy to love. Yeah. Well, we've got to get rid of it. Well, I suppose he'll leave when the play closes, but that may be too late. Yes, I'm afraid you're... Uh... Well, now, wait a minute. Suppose the play closed after one performance. That wouldn't be too late. But why would it close so soon? Well, what if the critic in the Daily Bugle gave the show a terrible panning? But suppose the critic likes the play. He wouldn't if we had our own critic doing the job. Huh? Look, suppose a big movie actor came to town and offered the present critic a swell job in Hollywood. He'd go, wouldn't he? I suppose he would. Then there's your answer. That's my answer? Sure. Maybe I better hear the question again. <laughs> Don't you see, Dennis? Now, look, you're good at imitations. You can impersonate the star. We'll bundle you up in a muffler, you can wear dark glasses, and the critic will be fooled by the voice. Gee, and then when we've got him out of town, I could write the criticism myself. Say, it might work at that. Of course. Now, uh, uh, what movie star can you be? Well, how about... Come on, Nelly. What's the matter? You crazy or something? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Somebody who's more dramatic. Oh, well, maybe... Racing with the moon, high above the midnight blue. No. No, not that dramatic. No. Besides, they aren't real actors. Now, couldn't you be a real picture star? Hmm. How about Betty Grable? <laughs> Dennis, all we have to work with is a muffler and dark glasses. Yeah, that's right. I was thinking of wearing a bathing suit, but he might spot me. Yeah. <laughs> Very possible. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what you do. You think of somebody overnight. Uh -huh. I'll be down to Willoughby's store tomorrow to pick you up, and we'll call on this critic together. Okay, let's see now. That's my boy who said that. Umbriago. No. Ah, uh, Hedy. Hedy, you are so lovely, Hedy. No. My wife's sweetie really face gave me a great big beautiful bird book. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Willoughby. Good morning, Dennis. Well, here I am. Did you remember this is the day I was to come back to work? Certainly. Can't you see I'm wearing a black tie? <laughs> Gee, you don't change much, do you, Mr. Willoughby? No. Well, get to work, my boy. I'll phone the insurance company and tell them you're back and they can raise our rates. Again. Oh, yes, sir. As a matter of fact, you'll be in charge of the store today. I have to leave in a few minutes for the summer theater rehearsal. The Summer Theater? Mm -hmm. You mean the one that's putting on Macbeth tonight? Uh-huh. Haven't you heard? I'm one of the play's principal backers. You? You? You've put money into it? Five hundred dollars. What's the matter? Haven't you ever heard of a businessman becoming an angel? Yes, sir. I may make it before you do. <laughs> what are you talking about? Mr. Willoughby, let me ask you a purely hypothetical question. If a certain person, who shall be nameless, was instrumental in your losing money, what would you do? I'd fire you in a minute. <laughs> Well, in that case, I must ask you another question. If you were to choose between love and your career, which would you take? Love? Sure, love. You know, what men feel for horses, dogs, and women, and stuff like that. What would I know about love? I've been married for 15 years. 
Oh, I see. But I guess if I were young and free and had to choose, I'd take love. You would? Certainly. Any red-blooded man would. How about one in whom the white corpsels dominate? <laughs> that kind, too. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say that, Mr. Willoughby. I guess you and I think the same way. That's about the nastiest crack I've ever heard. <laughs> well, what I meant was... Answer that and then get back to work. Yes, sir. Willoughby Store. Oh, hello, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, pick me up on my lunch hour and we'll go over and see that critic. I've had to choose between love and a career and I've chosen love. I've made my bed, Mr. Anderson. Now I only hope I can lie my way out of it. <laughs> Now, don't be nervous, Dennis. There's nothing to worry about. Just remember, you're a big Hollywood star. Okay, I'm ready. Good. Come in. Ah, Mr. Helcott, the eminent critic, I presume. My name is Coleman. Coleman? Well, you don't mean... Yes, old boy, Ronnie Natch. <laughs> Why, this is an honor, Mr. Coleman. I'd never have recognized you with that muffler over your face. Well, uh, m uh, Mr. Coleman's got a bad head cold. Hey, yes, old boy. I can hardly get my nose open to t talk through it. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, this certainly is a thrill for a modest, unassuming, and extremely talented critic like myself. I've always been a great admirer of yours, Mr. Coleman. Splendid. You have frightfully good taste, old man. <laughs> yes. And I just loved the late George Apley. Oh, we all did, old boy. All Hollywood turned out for the funeral. <laughs> you see, uh, he's referring to your last picture, Ronald. The late George Apley, that was the title. Oh, of course, yes. to be sure. So many things on my mind, you know. Yes, I guess you Hollywood people have a lot to think about. Oh, quite. I'd certainly like to visit that town someday. I've heard so much about everything in it. Grauman's Chinese. Oh, yes. Splendid little chaps, all of them. <laughs> but, but isn't Grauman's Chinese a theater? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Coleman doesn't get around much, you see. He's more of a family man. Oh, yes. Family problems all the time, you know. I was saying to my wife just before I left, Hortense, I said. Hortense? <laughs> yes, my wife. Grand girl, we're married. But, but isn't your wife's name Benita? Oh, uh, to be sure. Always getting her confused with a maid. <laughs> well, anyway, I said to her, Benita, darling, we'll just have to do something about Junior. Junior? Yes, my son, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, you don't have a son, Ronald, remember? Oh, well, I said to Benita, I said, darling, we'll just have to do something about Junior. Referring, I hope, to my daughter. But you don't have a daughter either. By Jove, you're quite right. And it's no wonder. No wonder what? No wonder we never did anything about Junior. <laughs> uh, Ronald, uh, Ronald, I feel that the interview is getting out of hand. Oh, really? Yes, I think we'd better get to the business that brought us here. Oh, quite, yes. Well, you see, Mr. Helcott... We've been reading your reviews in the local paper for some time. No! Really, Mr. Coleman? Yes. Yes, and we feel that you belong either in Hollywood or New York. I belong in Hollywood or New York? Whichever is father. I beg your pardon? Uh, well, uh, what Mr. Coleman means is, uh, wouldn't you like to go? Oh, of course. Goodbye, but... old man, and Godspeed. <laughs> But I don't understand. We have a job for you in Hollywood. A job? You'll be a critic, old boy. The same as here. Oh, for a moment I thought you wanted me to work. <laughs> oh, nothing like that. Now run along home and pack. We'll take over your duties here. Yes, we'll put a fine young chap named Dennis Day right to work on your column. Quite. Oh, uh, is there anything special this Day person should know about your work? Oh, no, it's very simple. I just review movies and plays like the one opening tonight and... Oh, yes. Does this Mr. Day have a five- or six-year-old nephew? A five- or six-year-old nephew? For writing reviews of radio programs, you know. <laughs> oh, I see. That explains a lot. Yes. Well, thank you for this wonderful offer. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll see you in Hollywood. I just can't wait to get to the bowl for Harry's piano recital. <laughs> 
Dennis, we did it. Yeah, can you imagine? And just wait till my review of Macbeth appears. There'll never be another performance by that company. Your rival is as good as out of town right now. We'll... Uh Uh-oh. Do you suppose that fellow changed his mind about going? Gee, I don't know. Uh, Come in. Mr. Helcott, I brought your tickets for tonight. Why, Herbert Anderson and and, and Dennis. Where's Mr. Helcott? Well, I'm the critic here now, Mr. Willoughby. I did like you told me. I chose love. What are you talking about? Uh, Mr. Helcott has left town, Homer. Dennis is taking his place. Dennis is... Why, that means he'll review my play. My boy! My dear, dear boy! <laughs> no use, Mr. Robbie. It's no use. Yours was not the love I chose. Why, Dennis, what do you mean? You know how a good play can get four bells? Yeah. Yours won't even get a door buzzer. <laughs> you mean you're going to pan my play? You can't. When the play is over tonight, just don't bother sweeping out the place for tomorrow, that's all. Oh, so that's your attitude, is it? Well, I'll fix you. You'll never get into that theater tonight. I'll have guards posted at every door just to watch for you. But you can't I do that. I can, Mr. huh? I can and I will. Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, what are we going to do now, Mr. Anderson? Do? Why, sit right down at that desk and start reviewing the play. But I haven't seen the play. I can't write up something I don't know anything about, can I? My boy, you keep forgetting you're a critic. Now, go to work on your criticism. And don't be subtle. Well, all right. Let's see now. Last night at the Weaverville Summer Theater, an audience of first-nighters was practically nauseated by the most horrible production ever to smell up a playhouse. (laughs) Too subtle? No, I think they'll know what you mean. (laughs) Good. Now let's see if I can think up something nasty. ready. Hi, Mildred. My, don't you look pretty this morning. Why, Dennis, aren't you mad at me anymore? You mean over that silly Mr. Stewart? What for? I took care of him. See the morning paper? Oh, I know. Well, I got myself appointed dramatic critic on it yesterday, and after what I said about that play, he'll never show his face around here again. Smart, huh? Dennis, you, you mean you panned the play? You bet, and every actor and actress in it. Ooh, what I said. <laughs> Lady Macbeth, too? Oh, her, I gave the full treatment. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Huh? My mother played Lady Macbeth. Your, your mother? <laughs> yes. Mildred, incredible as it may seem, I think I've made a blunder. Boy, will I hear from your mother when she reads that review. Dennis Day. I've heard from her. <laughs> so there you are, you worm. Did you write this review in the paper? Yes, ma'am, but... How I... dare you print a thing like this? The play was sick to start with, but it never recovered once Lady Macbeth made an entrance on her two... (laughs) on her two big left feet. Just a simple mistake in counting, Mrs. Anderson. And what about your next line? That when I got on the stage, something unfortunate happened to the lights. They stayed on. sure he didn't mean that the way it sounds. Stop making excuses for him. This time he's gone too far. This time I'm going Dennis. to... Mr. Willoughby. I want to see you. You better hurry. Mrs. Anderson and I are having a little discussion from which I may never recover. <laughs> Mr. Willoughby, do you realize what this boy has done? Well, certainly I do. He's made our play. What? Ten minutes after that paper hit the street, our box office was swamped with calls. The play's a sellout. Dennis, you're a doll. <laughs> I lead the most uncertain life But I don't understand After that frightful review That's what did it All we needed was a good panning They panned A.B.'s Irish Rose, didn't they? And Tobacco Road Ha <laughs> ha, we may run ten years oh, oh, Dennis, I'm so proud of you Yeah, me too Gee, can you imagine? Being panned by a critic turns out to be even better Than being banned in Boston <laughs> Dennis Day will be back in just a moment with a song, but first, here's a fact worth knowing. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And that's important, as our Colgate players are going to demonstrate. Scene, a beach, where a smooth-looking bathing beauty is having a pretty grim time. Listen. 
Oh, look at those men. All they can see is that girl in the red bathing suit. Well, they can't see you if you hide way down at this end of the beach, Claire. Well, they can't see me no matter where I am, and that's the truth. Claire, breath trouble cramps any girl's style. So how about seeing your dentist, honey? And here's what Claire found out. Scientific tests prove that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And Colgate's safe polishing agent brings out the natural sparkle of your teeth, cleans them thoroughly and safely. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So to clean your teeth thoroughly and safely, for a wake-up flavor everyone enjoys, use Colgate Dental Cream. Remember, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. With Charles Dant in the orchestra, here's Dennis to sing Peg of My Heart. Peg of My Heart, I love you. We'll never part. I love you, dear little girl. Sweeter than the rose of Erin Are your winning smiles endearing They go my heart Your glances With Irish art And trances Come be my own Come make your home In my Tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and Luster Cream Shampoo, the cream shampoo for true hair loveliness. Remember, doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. And this beauty plan with palm olive soap was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, 36 doctors proved the 14-day palm olive plan improves all types of skin, brings fresher, brighter, younger-looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. This is Vern Smith reminding you that Judy Canova's vacation is over and she'll be back on the air this Saturday night. So if it's laughter you're after, be sure to tune in the Judy Canova Show this Saturday night over most of these same stations. Tonight, stay tuned for the Summerfield Bandstand, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.